Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're all very well this here Sunday. I've just got back from dropping David off. He's going out for a drink in a pub with some friends. Imagine. Um, it's Saturday night when I'm filming this. And I got home and I was like, oh yeah, I'll just put a bit of makeup on and do something else with my hair and maybe put a different top on. And I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I've got really bad period pain. I've got jaw pain for literally like the third day in a row. I don't know why, but jaw pain. Um, and new thing to period pain i've got a headache which i never used to get with period pain so welcome to this guy um and yeah but i thought fuck it let's just do it normalize sometimes being on your period and feeling like shit when you're making videos but hey my mood's still up so don't worry and i'm quite looking forward to this is saturday now so it might be completely rubbish but in the uk they've got a new program tonight it's called the masked dancer which if you've seen the masked singer They've got a dancer version of it starting tonight with Oti Mabute, one of my favourite Strictly dancers, on the judging panel. And I imagine there'll probably be... And my glass is filthy. There'll probably be some actual Strictly dancers. I don't know how they're going to do it because, like, I'm not going to see someone dancing and think, oh, yeah, I recognise that dancing. I'm, I imagine they're going to rely heavily on the clues. Anyway, <laughs> we're one and a half minutes in and I've not shown you one book yet. Um... Today's video is my June TBR, so the books that I plan on reading in the month of June. Now, I've gone big as ever, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 books. That's not including the books that I'll probably get on my e-reader and the books that I'll probably do um, audio books of. So 16 books, pretty big. I've got a mixture of library books, book I want to read for book club, blah, blah, blah. But the main plan of June... <laughs> this little guy um was that i wanted to read the books that you wonderful people have sent me from my wish list um and i've got two four six eight of them here um there are two more that i'm not going to show here and that's because i think i'm going to um well one i'll tell you why <laughs> one of them is a witchy book um which is i think i'm going to read around october and the other one is playing bad heroines which i really 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 want to read but Coming up in Patreon Book Club, we're doing a month where we're going to pick a book which is over 500 pages. And I think that would be a good pick for that. So I think I'm going to leave that for that. And even if I don't end up, even if that doesn't win the poll, because uh, I do a poll every month for um, each genre and, and the Patreons get to pick which book uh, they want to read, then I'll still read that that month anyway. So yeah, even if I get two books read that are over 500 pages that month, I will read Playing bad heroines then but yeah so here we go the rest of the, the books um that i've sent on my wish list that i'm going to read uh, this month and then some more books library books and stuff like that i'll show you right so the first book is 84 charing cross road by helen hanf this was the the book that started off the wonderful um books being sent to me from my wish list i have had a wish list linked down below um and had never mentioned it and then one day um this arrived and somebody has bought it off my wish list and sent it to me now I put it on Instagram, I've said on here, I still never knew who sent me this lovely book. So the book that's, and then after mentioning it, people sent me other books from my wish list, which was lovely. So yeah, this is still the original book that started it all. So thank you very much. This is a epistolary novel, which is told in letters. And every time I mention it, everyone in the comments is like, oh my God, it's such a wonderful book. And I think if you love books, then I'm gonna love this. Um, it's set in 1949. Um, oh. Oh, it's a memoir. I thought it was a novel. <laughs> so this is Helen Hamp's memoir from 1949. Um, she wrote to a bookstore called Marks & Co. Um, in search of the rare edition she was unable to find in New York. Her books were dispatched with polite but brisk efficiency. But seeking further treasures, Helene, Helene soon found herself in regular correspondence with bookseller Frank Dool, laying siege to his English reserve with her warmth and wit. And as letters, books and quips cross the ocean, a friendship flourished that would endure for 20 years. So yeah, and then there's a sequel to this as well. And this has been made into a film. So I'm really looking forward to this. Sounds super cosy and lovely. Uh, then I've got That Reminds Me by Derek Awuzu, which was the winner of the Desmond Elliott Prize in 2020. Um, and this is the story of Kay. And Kay is sent into the care system uh, before he is one. Um, and he grows up in fields and woods and he's happy. When he's 11, the city reclaims him. He returns to an unknown mother and a part-time father, trading the fields 
and for flats and a community that is alien to him. Slowly he finds friends, eventually he finds love. He learns how to navigate the city. But as he grows, he begins to realise that he needs more than the city can provide. He is a man made of pieces, pieces that are slowly broken apart. And I remember when flicking through this, so um, there's a lot of like... It, that it's just like big sort of passages each chapter or, or passage is a big yeah there's not much sort of um paragraphs or anything like this it's all just big passages so yeah i'm i'm looking forward to reading that and then i've got kwame alexander a thousand words on race and hope light for the world to see um this i imagine will be a one sitting type of guy uh and this is as it says on the thing uh, a thousand words on race and hope um and all of them are in different sort of fonts and stylized on the page um, and I think it's going to be very powerful and I would like to sit and read that in one go and I will do just that. I have another memoir of Heartberries um, by Therese Marie Malhot, um, both of these like th thin little guys um, and this is um, Therese's uh, memoir of after she's grown up on an Indian reserve um, she's given a notebook and begins to write her way out of trauma the triumphant result is Heartberries a memorial for her mother a social worker and an activist with a thing for prisoners a story of reconciliation with her father an abusive but brilliant artist who was murdered under mysterious circumstances and an how do you say that word? Elegy? Eulogy? Elegy on how difficult it is to love whilst living with shame. Um, and also when I mentioned this in my book haul, everyone was like, this broke me. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be pretty, pretty powerful. It says here, a sledgehammer, a mixture of vulnerability and rage, sexual yearning and artistic ambition, swagger and self-mockery, a new model for the memoir. So that sounds very exciting. Then I've got Severance by Ling Ma. This feels beautiful um and yes i'm very much looking forward to this now because i sort of add things to my wish list as time goes on when i'd i'd forgotten what this was about and i'm yet to find a blurb on it but it says here i think it's about it, it's apocalyptic i'm trying to find it here we go the end is it the end of the world or just another day at the office Where's the thing that I found? Oh, it says it. A satirical spin on the end of times, kind of like The Office meets The Leftovers. Um, oh, this is, this is it. Severance might just be the first and only coming of age, immigrant experience, anti-capitalist zombie novel you'll ever need. So that sounds amazing. So yes, looking forward to that as well. Then I've got two of the Penguin Cloughbound classics, um, both of which I've never read before. Persuasion by Jane Austen. In fact, I don't even know the name of any characters in Persuasion. Persuasion. Knightley? No, that's Emma, isn't it? Um, Mr. Wentworth? Yeah, I, I don't even know the plot or anything about because as is the case with classical novels sometimes you know the plot because things have been based on it or you're aware of it in sort of pop culture but I don't think I know anything about Persuasion by Jane Austen so looking forward to that I mean look at that beautiful these front covers are always so gorgeous and then I've got um, Orlando by Virginia Woolf never read any Virginia Woolf before so this is exciting and when I've mentioned this a few people have said to me oh, I'm so excited that you've never read any Virginia Woolf before and you've got all of these wonderful things to read so yeah this is a biography um, on Orlando 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 there we go I'm looking forward to it really looking forward to it and then lastly I've got Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendes um, which I am also looking forward to uh, this is another coming of age story uh, and this is set in the black country in the 1950s an ex-boxer Norman Alonso is determined and humble Jamaican who has moved to Britain with his wife to secure a brighter future for themselves and their children blighted with unexpected illness and racism Norman and his family are resilient in the face of such hostilities but are all too aware that they will need more than just hope to survive at the turn of the millennium, Jesse seeks a fresh start in London, escaping from a broken immediate family, a repressive religious community and the desolate, disempowered black country, but finds himself at a loss for a new centre of gravity and turns to sex work to create new notions of love, fatherhood and spirituality. And this tagline here, which I've heard, I've seen people talk about this, is a, it says rainbow milk is a bold exploration of these amazing things race, class, sexuality, freedom, and religious religion across generations, times, and cultures. They say Paul Mendes is a fervent new writer with an original and urgent voice. So yeah, looking forward to reading that. So those are the books that I'll be reading that are from my wish list. Thank you again to those who, are send, who have uh, sent those to me. And then I've got, woohoo, 
three library books which are due back sort of quickly so I'll probably start the month with these to be honest the first one is Conjure Women by Afia Atakora um, and I got recommended this on Audible so thought oh yeah shall I listen to that and then saw that it was available at the library so I got it um, I think it's about witches you're free to decide your future, but how do you escape the ghosts of the past? The pale-skinned, black-eyed baby is a bad omen. Rue knows it, but for once, despite her skill as a midwife, she doesn't know what to do. Times have changed since her mother held the power to influence the life and death of her fellow slaves. Freedom has come, but this new world brings new dangers, and when sickness sweeps across the tight-knit community, Rue finds herself the focus of suspicion. What secrets does she keep amidst the charred remains of the big house? Which spells has she conjured? I was just thinking, why did I think this was about witches? But which spells has she conjured to threaten their children, and why is she so wary of the char charismatic preacher man who promises to save them all. It's a captivating novel of belief and suspicion, friendship and betrayal, and the lengths we will go to to save the ones we love. So yeah, that sounds great as well. Then I've got Escape Routes by Naomi Ishiguro, um, and haven't read anything, but I think this might even be her debut novel, but obviously love Kashiro is a guru and this is his daughter's novel um and this here says I feel I believe that I, I know I'm reading a lot of blurbs this time and I do apologize but I don't think I've got the brain space to sort of to read them and then regurgitate them to but We'll discover them together, won't we? A space-obsessed child conjures a vortex in an airing cupboard. A flock of birds offers a musician a startling new perspective on her city. A rat catcher summoned to a royal palace is plunged into a battle for the throne of a ruined kingdom. Two newlyweds find themselves inhabited, in, inhibited sorry, by an outsized watchful stuffed bear. Oh, it's stories. Nice. So yeah, stories. And then I've got The Dark Lady by Akala, which is a teen book. Now, you will know that I read um, Natives by Akala earlier this year, um, which was a uh, non-fiction book um, about race and the UK and etc. And loved it. I thought his voice in it was absolutely amazing and was delighted and excited to see that there was some fiction written by Akala. And yeah... So this is, it's short, so I can read it to you. It says, Henry is an orphan, an outsider, a thief. He's also a 15 year old invested with magical powers. This brilliant, at times brutal, first novel from the amazing imagination that is a Carla will glue you to your seat as you are hurled into a time when London stank and boys like Henry were forced to find their own route through the tangled streets and out the other side. This is an adventure like no other. So yeah, this is definitely one, and I need to read it very quickly because there's two people who are waiting on that at the library. So that's that. Next up, I've got my um, Patreon book club book. Um, in June, we uh, the, the genre was Japanese authors and uh, Murakami, Haruki Murakami one with Norwegian wood. Um, and this is a book that I've owned for a really long time. I've read a few Murakamis. I know um, Murakami is very beloved to people and I've read a few and always felt sort of like, oh yeah, that was that was okay and obviously I think with Murakami books there's often a, a sort of theme that runs through it. I remember having this discussion with Mercedes and saying like there's always a guy who really likes jazz and he's good at cooking and he's got a cat and things like that so let's see if those themes also appear in here. This is one of his earlier works I'm sure. Uh, yeah, 1987 it was first um, published in Japanese and then first published in Great Britain in 2000. And this is about Toru Watanabe. And when he hears his favourite Beatles song, he recalls his first love, Naoko, the girlfriend of his best friend, Kizuku. Immediately is transported back almost 20 years to his student days in Tokyo, adrift in a world of uneasy friendships, casual sex, passion, loss, loss and desire, to a time when an impetuous young woman called Midori marched into his life and he had to choose between the future and the past so yeah as always looking forward to reading this and then discussing this for um patreon book club always have a lovely lovely time discussing books for patreon book club um and then i've just got a sit with four books off my shelves that i'm just really really keen to read the first one obviously being um i received the proof of the new sally rooney book beautiful world where are you um which is about a it sounds as though it's about a friendship um between uh alex felix eileen and simon so this sounds a lot more sort of just based on the blurb i know nothing more on it sounds a lot more like conversations with friends um as opposed to normal people um but yeah this is out in september this year and i'd love to read it in june um to sort of just be a bit ahead of the the the, the time i was so delighted when it arrived um the, the proof of it so yeah looking forward to to reading that um and then I've got another proof of a book that isn't out until June, um, and that's Fragile by Sarah Hillary. Now, I don't often read many thrillers um, and sort of like mystery things, but I remember reading a book by Sarah Hillary called some, something like Someone Else's Skin, 
it's actually called someone else's skin and i saw that jen had been reading that recently and remembered how much i enjoyed that i thought it was a really really good thriller um and yeah so this is um the new one by by sarah hillary as i said called fragile what i will say is that the other books by sarah hillary seem to be in a, a series called the di marnie rome series and because this is a proof it doesn't have a oh no hold on it doesn't look as though it is in the yeah it doesn't look as though it's in the, the the series it says it's a dark contemporary psychological thriller with a modern gothic twist which is exciting it's about a runaway uh nell ballard so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to that just based on the fact that i really enjoyed someone else's skin and then blast from the past that's weird isn't it the way sometimes that happens like something like jen reminded me that i'd read that book and then i saw that this was coming out exciting um and then i've got two books that i'd uh, oh no this is another one sent for the publisher this is the lamplighters by emma stonex um about a series of um people that work in lighthouses um going missing and then i think it's three men in lighthouses set in cornwall in 1972 um and it's their wives looking into their disappearance apparently it's really really creepy um but yeah i thought this would be quite fun to read um and then lastly i bought this from um the dear damsels press uh, this is let me know when you're home stories of female friendship now i actually went to dear damsels because there was a book which i still haven't read also called what she's having which is a co collection of short stop maybe i'll add that as well yeah why not excuse me i'm just gonna get it down the back so yeah, I went to the Dear Damsels Press to, to get what she's having, which is a collection of stories about women and food. And then while I was there, I saw that they've also got stories of female friendship. Um, and I really love this, this um, title, Let Me Know When You're Home, because how many times have we said that to friends over the years? Um, so yeah, so another two, as well as the um, Naomi Ishiguru short stories, these guys as well. Um, and yeah, I just think these front covers are both really amazing. So yeah, we read in those. So those are the books that I plan on reading in the month of June. What are you guys reading in June? Have you read any of these books? Um, thank you again if you sent me a book off my wish list. And yeah, I've got to lift all these guys up now. There was eight, wasn't there? No, there wasn't, there was 16. There might be, there's 17 now, because I've had this one, 17 books. Let's hope I get through them, eh? Let's do it. And I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye.